Yeah, so, um, you know, Miguel in this story wants to be a musician, and, um, and so at Pixar we always want to have a really kind of um, uh, sharp attention to detail in, in, in everything we do, and so part of that, knowing that this was going to be a film where music would play such an important part of the story, what we've done is whenever we've got um, music recorded that you see performed in the film, we try to get um, reference of the, the musicians playing those instruments so that the animators can then um, refer to what the fingers are doing, how they're playing the instrument, and we can get it just right on the screen. Um, because I think that level of realism really helps to draw you into the story and, and, and really believe in, in rooting for this kid who really wants to become a musician even though his family doesn't want him to. Uh, again, at Pixar, you know, we're really interested in doing research as, as we dive into different worlds. And for this one, there's so much ri richness in Mexican music. And there's, um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but there's such kind of a diversity of styles of Mexican music. So we really wanted to lean in to um, mariachi and banda and son jarocho. These are different styles that we wanted to um, use as, 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 to fill out the, the musical world of the film and also to help inspire the original songs that, that, um, that uh, are, is performed as a part of the story. I mean, I, I, uh, I don't, I wouldn't, the, the animator, our group of animators have been doing, first they were doing Finding Dory, then they did Cars 3 in aggregate. And so um, as they started leaning into skeletons, I would say it was more fun. I don't know if it's more fun, but they had a lot of they had a great time doing it. But it was uh, very different from the previous two films that they've been working on, which I think was a pleasure for them, but also a really unique challenge. I, I think there's a, a lot more things to keep track of than than your usual human character, even like monsters or robots. Yeah. With with a skeleton, when you're animating an arm, you now, now you've got the added um, complexity of, of each bone and each digit and being able to fall apart and come back together. And so it creates a lot of opportunity that the animators get excited about for humor, but it's also a lot more to keep track of. So uh, they, they've been blowing us away though. Yeah, yeah. Had so much fun, so much nuance. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think a lot of it was inspired by the, um, the kind of visual language associated with the Day of the Dead. Um, uh, you know, there, there's so much vibrancy and color in, in um, the celebration of it, from the, the like marigold petals, which are, are laid out in paths to kind of guide the spirits back home to, to you know, the the outfits and, 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 and the papel picado, which are these, these paper flags that are super colorful. Um, we, we wanted to be inspired by, by the color and the vibrancy. And, and, and uh, it's also part of the celebration that while it deals with remembering um, people who've passed away, uh, the Mexican tradition is it, for it to be a really joyful occasion and for families to come together and have fun remembering the lives of these people. So it really lent itself to, to creating this world that's super vibrant and vivacious, ironically, you know, of such a lively world about dead people, but it was something we really wanted to lean into. We liked that contrast of really colorful, really celebratory, while still having the, the fun of skeletons and, and remembering um, generations past. Well, we, uh, you know, think Book of Life is an awesome film, and, and we've, uh, since it has come out, we've met Jorge Gutierrez, and he's a super cool guy, and we love all the work that he's done. Um, we, what we like about this film is, is that um, so much of it is rooted in the traditions of Dia de Muertos, so much of it, um, so much of it kind of celebrates the, 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 um, setting of, of this Mexican town of Santa Cecilia and then opens up the world into um, the land of the dead where what we tried to do is find a lot of inspiration from from just Spanish uh, Mexican architecture um, uh, kind of the layering of the city and and the merging of generations so um, I, I think what we've come up with 
we, we were curious to, to see the film to make sure we weren't uh, doing um, too much overlap besides it happening on the same uh, holiday of Dia de Muertos. Um, but, but I think what we've come up with is, is really kind of original and unique and, and I think it's a, a fresh take that people will be really um, interested and engaged to, to check out. When I was younger, I was really into animation, but I didn't have a lot of resources for knowing how it was done or, or um, what the process was. It was kind of a big mystery to me. Um, but then when uh, I got into high school, the Disney Channel in the United States started playing these old episodes of The Wonderful World of Disney. And every so often, they would have an episode where uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, these, these um, great animators, they would do a little, um, piece on them and they were all in black and white and they'd be flipping through the papers and you'd see drawing to drawing and and I would but it wasn't a super like great time slot it was like at 4 30 in the morning so I would wake up really early in the morning before school and I would put in the videotape and I would press record hoping that there would be some segment on animation um, and and so when it would come on it would just fill me with life and I got so excited and so in this film when we we knew we wanted to convey a kid who had a passion for music. And we didn't want to use, you know, we wanted to be lyrical and artful about it. So we tried to do it with as few words as possible. And I think that it's such a special moment to see just the little secret things that you learn from this moment is, is he secretly recorded clips of his favorite, you know, musician or Nestor de la Cruz, and he's cut them together into this cut that, that speaks to him as an artist, and he's practiced his guitar after watching it over and over. And I think all those little personal details help to really connect an audience to that character and know how, how deep that passion runs because of all the effort that he's gone through to, to kind of create this altar and, and create this relationship with a guy who died, you know, decades and decades before he was born. I think the Land of the Dead, um is this perfect marriage between Lee Unkrich and Harley Jessup, the production designer, and, and the technical appetite at our company, people wanting to really challenge themselves and do something um, really, really different. And um, uh, we were inspired by Mexico City and all of the architecture that, that came out of Mexico. And I, you know, what, how many lights are in the Land of the Dead? It's something to the tune of like, Six million. <laughs> and, and, um, and but you know everybody wants to keep pushing themselves at Pixar. We don't want to keep we, we, we want to keep learning and trying to figure it out. And that was a that was one of those ones that, that uh, that's definitely something that we pushed ourselves visually and technically. Um, and a, a big brainchild of Leon Bridge mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, that's that's been his special project is creating that world, and yeah. it's it's as you see that that uh, so much of the film takes place there. We really try to make use of the beauty and just the sparkling nature of it to to where it, it you're immersed in in in, in that that beauty and, and the vibrancy of that world. Um, we, is she secondary? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the question. That's the question. <laughs> we always, we, uh, Coco has, has, has kind of been working as the title for a long time, and, and we just kind of fell in love with the sound of it. And there's a certain mystery to it where you don't exactly know what it means, and, and, and hopefully it gets the audience to lean in. But we feel so much that, that in the celebration of Dia de Muertos, um, it's all about connecting generations and remembering those who came before you and, and it's, it's like a family reunion across the divide from the living and the dead. And Coco, as the, the great-great-grandmother, the matriarch, the oldest living person in this family, kind of becomes this symbol for, for, for that connection of, of the old generation and the new. And, and, um, and so, so we were just, we thought she was the kind of perfect um, uh, fulcrum around which the story uh, uh, revolves that 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 it, it just felt like a right fit for the title.